St. Augustine Commentary on Psalm 147, following. Just now has been read, give to everyone that asks of you. Luke 6.30 And in another place, Scripture says, Let arms sweat in your hand till you find a righteous man to whom to give it. One there is who seeks you, another you ought to seek. Leave not indeed him who seeks you empty, forgive to every one that asks of you, yet still there is another whom you ought to seek. Find a righteous man to whom to give it. Yet you, you will never do this unless you have somewhat set aside from your substance each what pleases him according to the needs of his family as a sort of debt to be paid to the treasury. If Christ have not a state of him, of his own, neither has he a treasury. Cut off then and put off some fixed sum either from your yearly profits or your daily gains, else you seem as it were to give of your capital, and your hand must needs hesitate when you put it forth to that which you have not vowed. Cut off some part of your income, a tenth if you choose, thou that is but little. For it is said, and the Pharisees gave a tenth, I fast twice in the week, I give tithers of all that I possess. Luke 18.12 And what says the Lord? Except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5.20 He whose righteousness you ought to exceed gives a tenth, you give not even a thousand. How will you surpass him whom you match not, who prepares rain for the earth? and gave unto the cattle their food, verse 9. These are the cattle, he means, even God's flock. God defrauds not his flock of their food, through men, for whose service he makes the grass to grow. And to the young of the ravens that call upon him, shall we perchance think this, that the ravens call upon God to give them their food, Think not that the unreasoning creature calls upon God. No creature knows how to call upon God, save the reasonable alone. Consider it as spoken in a figure, lest you think, as some evil men say, that the souls of men migrate into cattle, dogs, swine, ravens. Give this no place in your hearts or in your faith. The soul of man is made after the image of God, he will not give his image to dog or swine. While the young of the ravens, the Israelites used to say that they alone were righteous, because to them the law had been given. All other men of every nation they used to call sinners, and in truth all nations were given up to sin, to idolatry, to the worship of stones and stocks. But they, did they continue so? Although the ravens themselves, our fathers, did not yet, we, the young of the ravens, do call upon God. 1 Peter 1.18 For the young of the ravens, who seem to worship the images of their forefathers, have advanced and turned to God, and now you hear 
the young of the ravens calling upon the one God? What then? Do you say to the young of the ravens, Have you left your father? Plainly, I have, says he, for he is a raven who calls not upon God. I, the young of the raven, do call upon God. In the power of an horse, he will not take pleasure. Verse 10. The power of an horse is pride. For the horse seems adapted as it were to bear a man aloft, that he may be more uplifted as he goes. And in truth he has a neck which typifies a sort of pride. Let not men exalt themselves upon their worth, let them not think themselves uplifted by their distinctions. Let them beware lest they be thrown by an untamed horse. Psalm 20, verse 7 Nor in the tabernacle of a man will he delight. For the tabernacle of the Lord is the holy church spread throughout the whole world. Heretics separating themselves from the church's tabernacles, have set up tabernacles for themselves. For if perchance it be the lot of any who is good and pious, who confesses his own weakness, who is the young of a raven that calls on God, not to enjoy worldly distinction, he goes not out of the church. He sets not up for himself a tent outside the church, wherein God will not delight. But what says he? I have chosen to be cast away in the house of God, rather than to dwell in the tents of the sinners. Psalm 84 verse 10 But what does he add? The Lord will delight in them that fear him and in them that hope in his mercy. Verse 11 A robber is feared and a wild beast is feared and an unjust and powerful man is much feared. The Lord will delight in them that hope in his mercy. Behold, Judas who betrayed our Lord feared but he did not hope in his mercy. It is well indeed that you have heard, but only if you trust in his mercy, whom you have feared. He in despair went and hanged himself. In such wise then fear the Lord, that you trust in his mercy. Praise in unison, O Jerusalem, your God. Verse 12 Abiding yet in captivity, they behold those flocks, or rather the one flock of all its citizens gathered from all sides into that city. They see the joy of the mass, now after threshings and winnowings placed in the garner, fearing nothing, suffering no toil nor trouble, and, as yet abiding here in the midst of the threshing, they send forward their joy of hope and pant for it, joining as it were their hearts to the angels of God and to that people which shall abide with them in joy for ever. For what will you then do, O Jerusalem? Surely toil and groaning will pass away. What will you do? Will you plow or sow or plant vines or make voyages or trade? What will you do? Will it still be your duty to be engaged in the works you know you now do do? Good thou they are and spring from mercy. Consider your numbers, consider on all sides your company, see whether any hungers for you to give bread to. See whether any thirst for you to give a cup of cold water to, 
see whether any is a stranger, for you take in. See whether any is sick, for you to visit. See whether any is at strife, for you to reconcile him. See whether any is dying, for you to bury him. What then will you do? Praise in unison of Jerusalem your God. Behold, this is your business, as is wont to be said in inscriptions, use it and be happy.